And welcome back to another video. I don't ever want to see the face. I'm from Canada and not the States. Can I just say thank you guys so much for all the love in our last video? Like, thank you guys. I've just almost had like 70k. Like, bro, what? So let me know, guys, some more videos that you guys want to see down below. Um, I know that video was still a little bit all over the place, but I'm so glad you guys enjoyed it. And I want to say thank you guys so much for all the encouraging support, the motivation, everything that you guys were saying to us. We, thank you. Um, all the, you know, cheers to keep going along. It means so much. It means so much to us, you know, because, you know, you guys know we're working like all the time. It means so, so, so much to us. And I just want to say hi to all of our new Shanti babes. We've accumulated almost 4,000 subscribers in a month, guys. What? So, hey, Shanti babes. First things first, I just wanted to let you guys know, thank you. Secondarily, I want you guys to let me know some more videos you guys want to see down below. I am so open to doing any single type of video you guys want to see. Um, as I always tell my boyfriend, we work 24-7, so I like watching YouTube videos on occasions. Um, I listen to a lot of true crime, but on occasions I like watching YouTube videos of other like boss business babes doing their own thing. But I feel like nobody's actually showing you like vlogs and detail behind the scenes, and I'm like, oh, what? I'm about to be that person so I want to start documenting everything right now we're documenting us looking at new places new facilities so I'm gonna drop that down soon I'm gonna drop that vlog it's a, it's a long vlog of us looking at a whole bunch of different spaces and I'm talking about pricing a lot of them things that we didn't even know um so I'm actually really excited for you guys to see that video as well but I'm just taking you guys I'm just taking you guys like along the way it's like a lot of businesses you, a lot of businesses you don't get to see the evolution of the business and i want you guys to see everything you know it's awesome to go back and even watch these videos for our, myself ourselves um but especially for you guys so anybody that's feeling discouraged or anything like that or if, you know whatever the case just keep going um and i'm gonna keep dropping videos like this but please drop some more videos down below you guys want to see um but without further ado today's video is all about piping multi-colored body butters i feel like i haven't seen this video on youtube so i hope you guys enjoy this is a literally a step-by-step -step tutorial if you have any further questions let us know down below um at the end of the video i asked instagram some questions you guys want to know about piping so i'm gonna go ahead and answer those at the end of the video but for now go ahead and enjoy how to pipe our unicorn body butter or pretty much how to pipe multiple colors of body butter so enjoy shanti babes i love you guys so much please don't forget to like comment and subscribe down below bye okay shanti babes so we're gonna show you guys how to pipe we have our four colors so we're at the end of the bowl so we're just gonna ignore how crazy it's looking so we have our four colors right here and we're just gonna show you an in-depth how to pipe four body butters to make first you have your glad press and seal which you can literally get at any store target walmart literally anything so you get a, a nice 15 out, out. So 14 16 inches 14 16 inches all right we're gonna lay that nice and flat is pink let's grab a scoop of this I want to make sure it's nice and soft. You want to make sure your body butters are pipeable. Um, the consistency kind of depends on you, but it can be relatively soft. Ours is pretty soft and creamy, which is the optimal piping texture. And we're going to do a nice little smooth. Perfect. About two to three inches wide. You can probably do one more scoop. You don't want to overpipe this. You want to have nice... You want to explain to them your scoop sizes? So I usually do three or four scoops and then I smooth it out. But you want it to be like two to three inches. I have a little little too wide here, which is fine, but you have to adapt to the next color. Try to keep all the colors even. So now we go to yellow. It's okay, there's a little bit of pink in there. I mean, I had yeah. to measure doing this. So as you see, we have four different color spatulas. Now, if you have one, you can obviously just keep cleaning them. You see he's keeping his scoops nice and precise. The texture on this one is slightly harder, but still pipeable. So I guess you guys can see all the textures. Look at that. Look how that smooths out. That is a perfect creamy consistency. Now, if you guys buy a pre-made base, you don't even have to worry about trying to get the perfect pipeable consistency because our base is already pre-made and all you need to do is mix it and then it will come soft. to this yeah, soft, awesome, pipeable consistency. Look how simple this is. Boom. Boom. And depending on how well you can handle a piping bag is all depending on how much you want to put in. So me, I'm pretty comfortable with having a larger bag and a larger amount in the press and seal bag, but you'll come to notice how much you can handle. 
So at times you might do this and it might be a real struggle. So I'll explain later, about 20 seconds. <laughs> so the biggest thing is I grab these ends, try to grab right near them. Try to make, now I have a certain color combination. This is one I prefer. You can do whatever color combination you prefer. I go, I try to get that and I try to tuck it in as best I can. Then I grab the, yeah, now I wrap, get the other side. I try to make sure the other press and seal overlaps. Wait, focus on how that, that you still have space right yeah. there. So, you so still there's still like, there's a little bit there. Make sure they overlap. Now there's a couple of things I can tell you. You want to make sure I press this down. The bigger side, I usually twist. The side with the most excess yep. press and seal. So this one obviously doesn't have that much. Yeah. That one has a lot. So the biggest key to this is this. And it's nice to have that. You can grab one to it and then grab one to your bag. You can flip it, turn it, whatever the case may be. You can throw it into your piping bag. Boom, down in the piping bag. But the thing is, is you want to have it a certain size. Now, if this size, when you throw it in your piping bag, which the key to a piping bag for something like this would be a 16 to 20 inch piping bag. 16 to 20 inch, guys. Is that Six. for beginners? I would say beginners, I would say stay around the 16 and make this a little bit smaller. Yes, for sure. I'm right now using an 18 inch. So they're 16, 18, and 20. You so, oh, wrong bag. So, so I use this Wonder bag. It's the ones made in Germany. They're a little, little expensive, but I think the quality of them is really, really nice. Now, you see there's a little bit of wrinkles. It's because what I do is I, I twist yeah, the sure. bag. So you'll see that a little from bit a later. From Mateco, unless you can get on Amazon, you can get this from anywhere. And I, and I hand wash these and let them air dry, and then mm -hmm. I pat dry them, and they work really great. So here's the... All right, so let's get into the meat and potatoes. Let's pipe it. Lift it from the top. Now what I do is I slide it right down in, shake it down, and I get the top. Push it down with my hands, get all the air out. Now I twist it. That's how long my wrinkles happen. But again, it's not a big deal. Okay, but look at how big this bag is. So hold it down. Yeah. Obviously, yours does not need to be nearly as big. You just put a lot of product in there. So just to start, I would just small, you, you, try a small you, sample. Yeah. The biggest thing is, is find your comfort zone because this is my comfort zone. And some people are going to be different. Kamani's is a little bit smaller than this. Mine's yeah. a little bit bigger. So comfort zone. This is huge. You don't need to do it this big. All right, let's get into some piping. All right, guys. So if you can see this container, when I first started with the bag, you're going to notice that sometimes the colors blend or some colors come out like more yellow and pink came out than anything. So what I usually do is try to fill my bottoms with that and a little bit of blue, a little bit of purple come out, but I, I wait until my consistency is literally all the colors coming out and I call that purging. So I pretty much purge all the bad, not bad, it's until the consistency of the colors are all there. And when that is there, then you know you're gonna have a perfect top. So you get rid of all the blendings, what yep. you're saying. So pretty much something like that, you get yeah. a perfect consistency of all the colors. Perfect top. Then you can go roll with it. Never do the tops until you get that consistency. Yes. So. That's key. And the reason some of these look a little bit different is we're trying something completely new. We did this marbleized look. We're doing this marbleized look. And if you guys have seen this video, I'll probably upload this before something special drops. But this is a new body butter that we're doing. And it's like this cool marbleized look with a solid top. So they're all looking very unique. And we did it like that on purpose. So Let's try something new. Yep, so here's a sneak peek of the new butter. You have to find a perfect tip for your thing as well. So. Oh, absolutely. But for beginners, this circle tip is probably the easiest to start with, correct? Like, that's the easiest yeah. as far as coloring. Yeah. Now, we use the M1 usually. Yeah, M1's usual one that we usually use. The standard one you see us constantly using. Um, but this size, I couldn't remember on top of my head. I can probably find out. Yeah, but is it easier to start with a smaller size tip than a bigger one? Not exactly, because I, I, I'm going to tell you this too. Depending on the softness of your body butter when you pipe it, um, it all depends on how easy it comes out of the bag. But I've noticed the smaller the head, you know, how, how much ejection can come out at a time. How much ejection can come out of the tip at a time. It's sometimes a little tip. You know, the faster is going to come out clearly because you have more of an open gate to come out. So sometimes actually smaller tips are actually kind of hard. I prefer the bigger tips. So if you are a beginner, not the huge tips, like a medium size. Yeah, medium. Tip. But yeah. there are huge ones that are really cool. But again, those ones can get a little tricky. So medium size ones. The M1 is a perfect, I think, a perfect beginner tip actually. No, I feel like the circle one is. No, I I want to say most people, if you try this one, if you don't know how to squeeze that, like for instance, I, just to be honest with you. I have a pretty good hand with it, but 
with a lot of people, and I notice with a lot of people, and I watch people online do this, and I'm not, you know, I'm not making fun of, but at the end of the day, what they do is they, you know, I'll give you a good example with an empty container, if you guys can see this. People get really stringy, so they get like stringy like this. And then what happens is, it's not bad, but the problem is, is when you have a bigger tip, you can fill up a little bit more and it causes less error. It causes less error when you have a bigger tip. When you get stringy like this, it seems like it takes forever to fill it. Because then what happens is you start getting gappy holes everywhere. So I'm gonna give you a good example. It goes kind of like this. And then the problem is you're having all kinds of issues. It looks cool, but you have all kinds of issues and gappy holes. I feel like people struggle with that. See, I think with a bigger tip, and I can't like show it because I don't have one on, you can fill up more of a diameter in the area. I can use this and make it look bigger because of how much pressure I can put on the bag. It all depends on how much pressure you can put on the bag. And again, that all comes in with your hand work. Yes. So see how thin that line gets on the top? Now watch this. This one here, that one's a lot thinner on the top. I can make this look wider. So look how much Why wider, by how much pressure I put. Now the thing is, is the wider you want to get, you have to give yourself more space for the top. So if you give yourself a lot of space, see there's still a lot of space to Keep fill in this top. There's a lot of space that needs to be filled in this top. You can press harder and give it a wider look. When it's a top that needs, it's a lot closer. I don't really have let, much. Let of me one. show you one. Let me show you better jobs. So that's how much space he's talking yeah, about. Yeah, it's a good bit of space to the left in the container. He's saying not like yeah, well, way up here. Yeah, way up there. And then when you do it way up there, then you have to, I'll give you a good example with something like this. If it is way up at the top, this one isn't, but just say it would be, you have to be really thin with it. So what you have to do is be like. Which I doubt anybody would be though. You have to be real snaky with it and real small. So hard to explain because I don't really have any here in front of me to do that. Overall, if you are a beginner, I highly recommend using a small bag. So in the beginning, we're putting a lot of product in. You don't need that much product, maybe two scoops. Start off very small, get comfortable with yeah. it because it's a lot of pressure. I, um, I feel like a rookie, yeah, I feel like the biggest rookie mistake is that people, I feel like I can see a lot of people struggling with their bag and you don't yeah. always have to do so much in it. No, you don't. Like you, re you really don't have a nice quality product. It takes you, you know, longer to do it. It takes you longer to do it, you know? Yeah. Logan's been piping, he's literally pipe thousands of the body butter so we can't you know yeah <laughs> literally yeah so just take it one step at a time just use this video as a nice reference points um any other comments and stuff down below go ahead and let us know but i would say overall this is definitely just a nice beginner friendly hey this is kind of how you do the bag this is how you pipe simple as that we've evolved because you used to fill it in a, like a cup mm -hmm. and then pipe it in the bag in a cup and that's i mean you can do that too again you can look up the easiest thing to do is to really learn how to pipe is either look up how to pipe cupcakes just you know frosting type piping videos not just the dad but the press and seal honestly is you know the easiest method and what's cool too if you are doing like a unicorn and you're trying to decide on like a, a look you can do where you start in the middle and just squeeze kind of like go like that and it kind of keeps the colors consistent around the edges like all yellows on that side all pinks on that side all purples on that side all blues on that side then when you knock it down they're all pretty consistent and like what i like to do if you want to be kind of cool with it is then try to find where your yellow and blue and everything is match that up with your top it's a little little cool trick so everything stays consistent so then all like the yellow is with the yellow and then the pinks with the pink and then purple purple so on and so forth and what that does kind of makes it look a little bit more professional and but sometimes so you can why do don't it. you go with that first why don't you tell them just purge it all out first that's the easiest it's oh like yeah you can do it like that yeah, why don't but, you say that? but then you can also you know you also can do more of a swirl thing so when you do a when you do more of a rotational circle in the beginning of the the, the container what can happen is and it looks really cool too it kind of gives you like a swirl mark all around the edges yeah, but I feel like just going like that, it's just... But, but then the thing is, when you purge like that, I, again, it all depends on how much pressure you can put on the bag. If you're not willing to be willing or able to put the pressure down on the top of the bag like that, you're not going to be able to do that. So that's something that you can do if you're capable. <laughs> so... And when I get close to the end of the bag, it's a good little thing too. When you get close to the bag, you'll start seeing your colors start to um, smear and kind of like, I don't know, collide. And they don't look as smooth. So usually what I do is I get an empty container again. 
And just purge it. And I literally just purge it all out. Mm. Sometimes it looks pretty nice, but you can kind of see at the ends. It just blends. It blends a little bit. Yeah. So I just get it, put it on the bottom of the container. No one's really going to know. It still looks really pretty on the bottom. We want all of our tops to look perfect. Perfect, yeah. As perfect as they could. I'm going to ask your consistency is very loose. Um, I see a lot of people piping on Instagram and their consistency is very loose, which isn't a problem, but you can't pipe it like that. So either you need to let it harden, you need to add less oil, so or you need to add a harder um, oil. So add a hard, unfractionated coconut oil, add a cocoa butter, add a harder butter, um, and that should help that problem of it melting in your hands. Secondarily, the press and seal method that we use will also help that and using a cloth bag will help that i'm assuming that she, a lot of people i see use like plastic bags using a cloth bag which is what we use in the video will help that as well because you're not really having contact with the butters per se it has to go through the press and seal then it has to go through the cloth bag and then it has to hit your hands for that heat to melt the butters um and as far as blending goes we address that in the video um and as far as using our pre-made base so as i mentioned body butter consistency and formula is probably one of the hardest things to master and i'm literally not even gassing you we have our lux mist we have our whip soaps and we have our body oils in front of me and we curated that way quicker than it took us to create our body butter formula um and the consistency and constantly doing it because it's just so inconsistent we've now been making body butter for almost a not even a year now for like six seven months um and it's still like it's just Body butter does what everybody wants to do at this rate, you know, it really does. So it's all about finding that consistency and that's why buying our pre-made formula will save you so much time and stress, guys. As you see in our um, video, that is the formula that you'll be getting. It's nice and thick. Um, you can over whip it. So if you have a nice hand mixer or you just have a, like a cheap, like kitchen, not a KitchenAid, but a KitchenAid type stand mixer, you can literally buy our base, a thrower base and a mixer because when you get it, it will be solidified because again, body butter naturally solidifies and not gonna be able to pipe it because it's gonna be way too hard. Um, so when you buy our base, throw that in a hand mixer, throw that in a um, stand mixer, whip it on high. So you want it to be nice and fluffy. It, it is very easy to pipe it when it's really fluffy. There's a difference between it being like liquidy and almost runny, fluffy and wet versus it just being extremely fluffy. And at first we weren't able to pipe multiple body butters because our base was just so fluffy and it's like, okay, they would melt and then you would have all those issues. But now with the press and seal method, you can pipe body butters being super fluffy. Like Logan pipes them when, as you see in the video, when they're still a little bit thick 
the thick and rich um and to most people like me that would hurt my wrist and it hurts his wrist too but he's a lot stronger so he can you know kind of pipe it like that but when you buy a pre-made base whip it on high add your fragrance oils whatever else you want to add to it and then pipe it and that should be a nice easy fluffy consistency for you um but once again mastering body butters is 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 pretty tricky so if you don't if you haven't already done that and you want to just learn how to pipe and this video is perfect for you um if you want to start piping body butters and this video is perfect for you this method for the pressing seal works for any amount of colors so i was thinking about doing one for like one or two colors but i'm like honestly the method is the same, so I'm actually glad we went ahead and just, boom, went ahead and did rainbow, which is the hardest one. So, because, again, as you guys see, it is pretty simple. Once you start to work with it, it is pretty simple. Um, I don't pipe. Piping's not for everybody. I don't pipe. I still have issues with piping, but honestly, it's up to you. If I really sat and trained myself to pipe, I'm sure I could pipe, so personally though i don't pipe but um yeah it's all about finding the comfort zone as logan mentioned multiple times in the video hope this video really helps like i told you guys again having that the perfect piping consistency is a nice fluffy butter um and then it'll harden so that is the perfect piping consistency i've been on my knees <sighs> for this video <laughs> for so long my knees hurt so i'm just gonna go take off my freaking makeup it's just the crap out of my eyes, even though I shouldn't. I'm gonna go just kill myself with some eye drops. And I'll see you, Shanti Babes, in my next video. I'll drop some more videos you guys wanna see down below. I love you guys so much. Bye, guys. <gasps> my knees. My knees hurt. My knees hurt.